So here's the first picture that I ever drew of Luffy, and as you can see, it's not quite as good as where I'm at right now, but if you like this type of thing, remember to follow me on Google+, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. One Piece Chapter 208, Guardian Spirit. Well, that was, uh, that was a very touching chapter. Um, hello, my brothers and sisters of the Nerd Nation. I, as always, am Jim, here to bring you another review on the epic and awesome and sometimes sourful um, tale of One Piece. Our last chapter saw us with uh, Vivi finally being able to reach the top of the clock tower in time um, to, you know, uh, shorten the fuse that was that was going to the cannon and, uh, and effectively uh, take out the Baroque Works agents that were defending it, only to find out that the, uh, the cannon uh, ball was actually on a timer as a, as a backup, as a Crocodile had thought of everything, apparently, and, um, and was still set to blow. So that's how, how things left off. The, the fight between Crocodile and Luffy was not looking very good. Luffy, of course, has been poisoned, and he's just, uh, <laughs> just definitely been beaten and, and, uh, and, and tread on very heavily here. So um, that's where things left off. And that's where things pick up. Now, I didn't know what was going to happen because obviously I, I don't don't read ahead. And uh, but as soon as I went and I saw the name of the chapter, Guardian Spirit, and I was thinking about it logically, I was going, okay, well, with just mere seconds left before this this bomb explodes, you know, I, I kind of thought in my head. Uh, who might be able to come to the rescue, and uh, and it was one of those times that I was right, but uh, I'm not very happy about it, um, you know, because certainly there was some sacrifice involved. So let's dive in here. The chapter starts out with, uh, of course, we, we see all the straw hats, and they're like, oh, son of a bitch, you know, we, we, we did all this, and the bomb's still going to go off anyway, and, uh, and you see them all just kind of getting very downtrodden and saying, you know, was this all for nothing? And uh, and then we you know we see Vivi up there and it, it's kind of neat because as Vivi's just kind of you know just collapsed and just she's like got nothing left you know she's just like what the hell am I gonna do now the thing's gonna go off anyway we see uh, the kind of rim of the opening the round opening of the clock tower and you see in the last panel before it cuts to Luffy and Crocodile you see the feet of uh, of Pell the Falcon and um, and when I saw that I was thinking okay well that, that makes sense I mean he can fly maybe he can fly this bomb out of there so. We then cut back to uh, several pages between Croc and Luffy. And, and like I said, Luffy has just, I mean, he, he's been beaten pretty badly. Um, you you got to remember that since Alabasta, th this whole arc began, I mean, really just since Rain Base, I mean, Luffy has been, um, uh, you know, ran through by Croc, um, you know, and his hook. Uh, almost, you know, almost died in the quicksand if it wasn't for Nico Robbins saving him. Then the second time that he came at him and they were fighting, he did he fared much better. He was actually able to hit him over at the Palace of Alabarna. Um, but really, in the end, he wound up getting you know beaten, dried up into like a Luffy beef jerky and thrown on the ground. And uh, and now he's been poisoned, and I mean he is still coming. I mean he's had uh, you know he's getting hit with uh, pieces of rock. He's gotten nailed by Croc. And um, really, you just you have to admire his resolve. Um, just how much he just keeps coming back. I mean, he is, uh, you know, he just takes a lick and keeps on ticking. I mean, you can think of a number of different, um, you know, number of different analogies, but um, but that, that's really what it is. Is it's just I got to admire uh, his determination, you know, and just keep coming at him. So. So Croc goes and he said, you know, he's going into his hole and, and so it doesn't matter and you're going to be beaten this and that. And then Luffy goes and he's like, I would never lose to someone like you. And uh, and then, you know, and Croc's like, listen, man, you're just, you know, you're basically, you're just, you're running on fumes. Like you're just, you're talking angry, but you've got nothing left. You know what I mean? You're poisoned, you're beaten, you can't even hardly stand and you got nothing left. And he nails Luffy again, you know, <clears throat> and, and Luffy goes and, and gets back up, you know, and and like I said, you just got to admire him because the way he's drawn and everything with all the cross hatching that Oda uses and just all the blood and everything dripping down his face. I mean, he just, you know, he, he does not look, he looks like a train wreck, really. <clears throat> and, uh, and and he's sitting there and, and uh, you know, he says, I'm going to be king of the pirates, you know, so I, I can't lose to someone like you. That's his whole whole thing there. And um, and Croc's like, you know what, there's there's men that have been much more uh, educated on, on the seas and, and the grand line and just the world itself and whatnot that don't even make that claim. That's not a claim you should make lightly boy you know and uh but luffy as we know that it seemed silly 100 or 200 chapters ago and he's like i'm gonna be king of the pirates but now the more you see it the more you think i don't know man this you know this bastard just keeps coming so <laughs> he got a better chance than anybody else i've seen but um so we wind up seeing that exchange between them and then the rest of the chapter it winds up going and cutting back to uh, the clock tower we see that of course pell has appeared and we wind up seeing this really nice touching flashback um 
from Vivi's childhood where she was she was caught playing in the munitions uh, store storeroom, you know, where obviously where all the explosives and stuff are kept in the kingdom. And Pell found her in there and she was like, oh, sorry, you know, just a little kid like I was just just wanting to have fun or whatever. And Pell just goes whack. And I mean, just, you know, just completely bitch slaps her. Right. And uh, <laughs> everybody's freaking out. You know, they're like, oh, my God, an Igram going to come after him and everything else. King Cobra ultimately goes and, and says, no, no, don't don't worry about, it. you know, back off type of thing. And then you see Pell and you see that, you know, he, he was scared for her life. You know, it was one of those things where it was almost like one of those when your parent tells you, this is gonna, this hurts me more than it hurts you. Having kids now, I now understand that because there's many times that I've had to kind of take the, the hardened heart route with them to teach them a lesson or to let them know that, no, that this is unacceptable. You can't do this. But it, but it really has. It's hurt me. It's, you know, it's eaten away at me. Um, so this is that type of situation because then he goes and he says, you know, if anything ever happened to you, I mean, I, I would, I would never, I, I don't know what I would do to go on you know he loves her that much he cares for that much it's not just a job protecting the kingdom um so obviously we know as well that he's referred to as the guardian or the guardian spirit of the kingdom now um then they go and they show a a, a, a scene where they're flying where she's flying on top of him and he's like she's like oh way higher you know and he's like you know you can never tell your father about this he ordered me you know he gave me a king's order right which is some big shit even if it's a nice king it's still you know it's like it's like the army man it's a respect thing a chain of command thing the king ordered me to never, you know, fly you anywhere and whatnot. And she's like, oh, okay, oh, I won't tell anybody then because you... Anyway, the, the point is, is that um, she asks Pell, she says, why are you always training? And he says, well, you know, be to, to defend the kingdom, you know, and, uh, in, you know, in case we have to fight. And she's like, who are you going to fight? And he goes, well, it's not really to fight, more to defend. And she goes, what's the difference? And this is the whole thing about uh, Alabasta itself and, and the way and why its royal family is better than most because... Their, their thought is is that we're going to defend what's ours if somebody comes to try to take it, but it's really just the mindset, you know. Fighting is usually something that you go on the offensive, okay. I've said this before and I'll say it again. It's much harder to walk away from a fight than it is to just go and throw a punch, say a word, whatever. Um, that's the easier thing to do. It really is, you know what I mean. You fight, you win, you lose, whatever. It doesn't matter. You're sore, you heal up, you're good. Walking away from something is much tougher, and it's the same type of thing with this. We're here and we're ready to defend if someone does come to attack us, but we're not out looking for trouble. You know, we're not out looking to conquer other lands or to to rule the kingdom with an iron fist. So I really like that, and to me, that was one of those uh, those Oda moments where it was kind of like a life lesson that he put in there as well. So maybe I'm reading too much into it, but that's what I get from it. So we wind up then going and coming out of the flashback, and Pell goes and he says, uh, you know, in a very touching moment, he says it was uh, you know it was an honor. To to have served the royal family, the, the Nefertari family. And, um, you know, it, it was just, just a complete honor in this and that. And then he goes and he, you know, grabs the bomb, turns into his falcon form, and goes and flies out, up, up, and away. Vivi, of course, is crying, you know, and it's kind of like the, no, Pell, you know. And, and you know it's not going to end well for the fellow over here. Now, I don't know, um, you know, what Oda's uh, stance is on, you know, getting blown up in midair by a bomb that could take out three, three square miles uh, if you come back from that. And, uh, and, and either way, it doesn't really matter to me because the point is, at this point, it's the sacrifice that he gives. He's willing to give his life, and it appears that's what he does because as he flies up, up, and away for the last few panels and everybody sees him, the straw hats on the ground, the Marines, everybody who's fighting, they, anybody who winds up looking at this and seeing this sees him go and he flies up, up, and away, and then in a nice double-page spread, just get the boom. You know the the huge explosion, and then of course you see uh, the end of the chapter is just Vivi just just leaking, just crying. You know because obviously this is a childhood friend of hers, and um, you know and, and it's certainly something that uh, again I think it was done in a very touching way, and then doing the flashback as well because we didn't know Pell that well. It was hard to really care for him that much in his sacrifice, but I think that the flashback was done in such a nice way that it made me have more respect for him in that short period of time. Uh, because I went and I read the flashback, and then when I came out of it, I was like, you know what, I respect this dude, man. Because he went and he smacked the princess, but he didn't do it just to go in as a show of force. He did it to show her that, listen, you cannot do that. And even though I could have gotten beheaded for doing something like this, that's how strongly I believe in not wanting you to get hurt. That's how much I care for you, you know. Um, and then, like I said, just the honor to serve the family and everything else. Um, you know, if we had more uh, rulers or kingdoms or governments or whatever that had that type of selfless, uh, 
you know, selfless thought process going on, the world would be a much, much better place. But we won't get into politics now. So that is how the chapter ends off. And um, certainly my chapter question is, what do you think um, as far as, you know, Pell and his sacrifice? I mean, do you think that it was uh, that it was it was cheesy and just you know, it, was, it was overdone? Uh, do you think that it was something that was was done very well because of the flashback, as I thought? Or do you think that, hey, I just don't care, whatever, the bomb didn't go off inside the, uh, you know, and, and kill everybody. It just killed one guy. So no big deal. No big loss. Let me know what your answer to that question is in the comments down below. Feel free to hit the thumbs up, the like button if you think that I deserve it. Uh, and of course, you know, subscribe if you have not done so already. We will look forward to catching all of you in the next one, nation. This beautiful lass is telling you, hey, you should subscribe right now there, fella.